His films were intimate, contemplative, and minimalistic, and he did it all without moving the camera much. When it comes to Japanese drama, Yasujiro Ozu perfected the genre. His pillow shots and static camera work made him iconic. His films were mostly about family and marriage. He mastered these genres with silence and sound, black and white and color. He was revered not just in Japan, but around the world. Let's explore his films and find out what makes them so legendary. You might be surprised by which ones are remakes. Let's start with one of Ozu's earliest films. Shomengeki was a popular genre in the 30s. It portrayed the everyday life of the Japanese urban middle class. I was born, but a social satire about a family moving to the suburbs was Ozu's most accomplished silent film and one of his finest comedies. Two young brothers become the center of the drama as they try to get used to their new school. They deal with new friends and bullies with stellar comedic timing. Some of Ozu's trademark camera work started in this film. You can see it from his use of low camera positioning. He also has more faith in tracking shots before static shots became his trademark. Let's skip ahead to the age of sound. Equinox Flower is a change not just in color, but setting. The film favored the luxurious life of a rich family. Issues of marriage and culture bring about plenty of drama. Hirayama is posed as the traditional father who isn't as accepting of his daughter becoming westernized. As Ozu's first color film, he uses the medium well. The colorful fall season makes for great symbolism of Japan's shifting societal norms. With such highlights as the red teapot, Equinox Flower is more notable beyond being Ozu's first color feature. It embodied the director's best traits and strengths of his final era. Early spring focused less on concerned elders and more on the romance of youth. The young couple at the center of this picture is salaryman Shoji Sugiyama and his wife, Masako. The loss of their son has soured their relationship. This leads to Shoji having an affair with a typist called Goldfish. Ozu explored the darker side of post-war Japan with early spring. Shoji is portrayed as a frustrated, hurt man. At the same time, Goldfish is given agency for her sensitivity. Unlike Ozu's previous films, young people are not portrayed as potential opportunities. They're given the chance to experience the troubles of older folks. They get to feel the relatable feelings of marital pains and mundane jobs. With Late Autumn, Ozu once again taps marriage and generational gaps. Setsuko Hara plays widow Akiko. After losing her husband, she shifts her focus to arranging the marriage of her daughter, Ayako. Her late husband's friends might be able to help her. Traditional and modern sensibilities are challenged, as with most Ozu movies. What makes Late Autumn stick out is its bittersweet and gentle nature. One of the highlights of the film is Ayako's high-spirited friend, Yuriko. It's a charming film that still manages to pick apart patriarchal society. How about a trip away from the suburbs and cities? Floating Weeds is one of Ozu's most colorful detours. As a remake of his 1934 silent film, this story takes place at a seaside town. Komajuro is the leader of a traveling troupe. He's visiting this town not just to put on a show, but to meet his illegitimate son. But Komajuro's mistress Sumiko grows bitter about this realization, and the drama flows from there. There are plenty of characters to follow, and the film feels more grand. Ozu's remake is also a treat for the eyes. The staging of his color version makes great use of the camera and landscapes. Early Summer is more akin to Ozu's trademarks. It's another story about a daughter getting married. Setsuko plays Noriko, a woman living in a middle-class family. With three generations under one roof, her marriage could free up some space. Her elderly parents intend to retire to the country after Noriko's marriage. The meditative nature of Ozu's filmmaking is in full swing with this film. Early Summer depicts complex characters of various generations, from the brattiness of the young to the stubbornness of the old. It's also a sympathetic film for the next generation. Noriko's ultimate decision about marriage signaled a new agency for post-war Japanese women. Few films in Ozu's filmography are darker than Tokyo Twilight. 
It utilizes familiar Ozu actors and familiar themes, but there's a different tone to this picture. Setsuko Hara plays Takako, the eldest daughter in a bad marriage with an infant son to take care of. Her sister Akiko is in an even worse spot. She's become pregnant and is trying to find some cash for an abortion. Problems complicate when their estranged mother enters the picture. As the title implies, Tokyo Twilight was mostly shot at night, and it's a fitting time. This is a darker story for tackling honesty within a chaotic family. If you're looking for a brutal drama of Ozu, look no further. An Autumn Afternoon feels like the culmination of the filmmaker's observations of Japanese society. Chishu Ryu plays an aged widow, and Shima Iwashida plays his self-sacrificing daughter. A series of events cause them to clash when the daughter gets married. The father needs to learn to let go. All of Ozu's classic themes are here. The shifting trends of post-war Japan, the fear of Western influence, and perhaps most prominent is the decay of the nuclear family. It's an especially moving picture as Ozu's last work. The final scene is unforgettable. Ryu sits alone in an empty kitchen corridor. It's a fantastic contemplation on dignity and the many thematic elements of Ozu's best work. One of Ozu's most defining films in the jump to sound was Late Spring. Setsuko Hara plays Noriko living a comfortable life in the suburbs with her widowed father. For being in her late 20s, Noriko figures she's missed the marriage boat. She laughs off attempts to hook her up, but her father desperately wants her to be happy. Late Spring has all of Ozu's hallmarks. The meticulous low-angle framing, static composition, unique shooting of conversations, and the pillow shots. All the stuff that makes Ozu so iconic is on full display. What makes the film all the better is that it rarely feels like melodrama. It's always heartfelt, but never overly sentimental. For those familiar with Ozu's work, it's no surprise that Tokyo Story takes the top spot. It isn't just his best film, but one that put him on the map of internationally revered directors. The story is a quietly tragic one. A grandparent couple have ventured to Tokyo to visit their children and grandchildren. The problem is that hardly any of their family want to spend time with them. It's a bittersweet contemplation on growing old and seeing the world from different perspectives. The telling visuals make for the finest of poetry. Ozu knows not only to make a scene look interesting, but say so much with so little. Tokyo Story has a striking similarity to an older American film. For that inspiration, Ozu's film resonated around the world. So many people took note of the director after this film was released internationally many years later. Tokyo Story is what makes Yasujiro Ozu not just a great Japanese director, but one of the greatest directors of all time. Now, which Ozu film is close to your heart? Let's talk in the comments. For our full list of essential Ozu films, check out the link in the description below.